So, hello and welcome to a special edition of Teen Talk Live. My name is Ella Majadi and I'm going to be your guest host for today. Today, we have with us a few of my friends. I'm oh, I'm Lois. And I'm so, so, the two of my friends are both from Ghana, just like I am. They were born and raised there. And they came here at a very young age. Um, Asatua, when did you come? Um, the first time I came, I was in fourth grade. So I was like nine years old. Okay. And I'll say, um, I'll say, what about you? I came here when I was five. Okay. Excuse me. So where exactly did you come from in Ghana? Like, which city? What's the difference between the cities that you came from? Okay, I came from Ghana. I, I came from Ghana. I thought you go. Okay, so I came from Accra. And it was a, it was a big city, like the biggest city in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really experience any village life or nothing. But <laughs> I came from. I came from, with me. I came from the city. Okay. Well, yeah. same thing. Um, I came from the city too. No, really, no, no difference really. So, what's the most shocking thing you could say was the difference between Accra or Tema and um like where you are now like a difference in say behavior um sanitation um the the hustle is there a difference is there was it any shock to you oh okay so um no, nah, it wasn't really, it wasn't really a big difference, but I mean, like, of course, it's going to be neater, it's going to be better, it's going to be, like, more, you know what I mean? Like, more, like, you're going to see it as a different, you're going to see it from a different perspective, because you didn't grow up here. Yes. But um, it wasn't that much of a big difference, because of where I grew up personally, but yeah, I think everything, like, if you move from one place to another, of course you're going to find something like different. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. What about you? Um, the question was the difference from from Ghana to here. Mm -hmm. Um, what I the difference that I see is that in Ghana everything is really more family oriented. Like people are extremely close, and here in America, it's not like that at all. Um, like in Ghana. The things I remember would be like, we wouldn't like sit together, you know, have a little family dinner, but you would know that, you know, there was love in the family, you know, like, and there would be, it, our families are big. It's not just mom, dad, and siblings. It's mom, dad, siblings, grandma, grandpa, aunts and uncles all together. Like it was a community where everybody knew each other and everybody got along. But here in America, it's just very different. I just see people divided. And it's not just in families, but like, because of like so many issues that's going on here, I feel like it's breaking more people apart than like, the thing that I see is that it's breaking more people apart. And in Ghana, it was never like that. That's a very good point. Asantua, do you have anything to add about that? Um, Not really, but you know how like, over here, kids are like, over their parents, I feel like back home, it wasn't like that. Like, you had to respect the people you grew up with. It yeah. didn't matter if they were your mom or your dad. Like, once they were older than you, you had to show respect. Yeah, I feel yeah. Like there's just one big difference that um, I've experienced. Yeah, that's definitely true. Because here, it's like kids, it's like, oh, if an adult doesn't give me respect, I'm not going to give it back. But in Ghana, it's not like that. It's like... If someone's older than you, you have no other choice but to respect them because they're above you, they're older, they're wiser than you. But here in America, it's like it's like the kids and the adults, they both want an equal level of respect. But in Ghana, it's never like that. Like, as a child, you stay in a child's place. And as an adult, you stay in an adult's place. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. yeah. 
do you think that kind of mindset has had any effect on how like we like children teenagers especially they act and they perceive themselves and as a result the outcome of what they do in the future can i go first yes go ahead um i definitely think that has a big impact on teenagers these days because the way my mom raised me, raised me now is to, is to always respect people older than me you know and, and like whenever i see my friends they, that aren't african but are just black themselves the way they're raised is just completely different like m- majority of my friends they just like they feel as if they're them and their mothers or their fathers or their adults like again their res- the respect level should be equal so they feel as if that they're either above adults or equal to adults so that makes them feel they have like this high chair that they feel like as if they sit on which to me is not right because it's like no matter what at the end of the day that adult will always be older than you will always be wiser than you like you need to respect them regardless of what's happening and that changes them in in every in every situation every time they're every time they're in trouble or every time they're going through something it's just like they feel as if oh i can handle this situation on my own you know or like oh i'm an adult i'm wise like i just like as as teenagers as soon as like we hit a certain age level like 17 18 oh, I'm grown. Everyone likes to use that term, grown. I can do this. I can go out. I don't have to tell my parents this or that. And that changes them because it's it's like they're trying to be so independent so quick when they don't realize that, like, you have parents for a reason who guide you. You have parents who lead you to, towards the right direction. But if you don't want to listen to that, you're going to go a different direction, in a different path, in a different direction. That's going to end. That's going to make you end up in a place that you don't want. That's not too wise. Is there anything you would like to say? I think she has said most of it, but um, I'll like I'll like to add something very little. Um, you know, like I I believe that if you train a child in a certain way that they should go, when they when they um when they're older, they're gonna take whatever you taught them on the way, and take it to like adulthood or whatever like stage they're going into. Like you can't treat a child. I know, like, children sometimes demand respect, but then you need to give it to them so they are able to, like, like, you know, if you're, like, I think children think I'll only respect you if you respect me back. Yes. That's how most um, kids are trained. But I feel like they do, like, they need the respect so they are able to be, like, comfortable in what they want to do. Yes. So if you give the child the, the respect that they are demanding, then I feel like the child is also going to respect you in a way that you're also looking for but it doesn't mean that you should go out of your way to um, be, like, be under the child. Like, listen to everything yeah. that child is saying. I mean, you're a mom and you have a right over your child. That's what I feel like. I understand what you both are saying. That's very good points because, Lois, it seems like you're saying the difference between being raised as, like, being raised as an African child as opposed to just a Black American child or an American child is that you have this sense that, oh, you must respect your parents regardless of your your elders, not just your parents, regardless of whether what they've done to you, because that's just the way it is, you know, that sense of respect ingrained in you. But as to all, I do understand that children, especially in this generation, we know we are a little smarter and we know that we have this sense that we need you need to respect us so that we can respect you back Mm -hmm. so what i'm seeing is we need to have this uh, this compromise with our parents all this should be based on communication you know talk to your people let them know and you figure out what works for you so i'm actually i'm going to direct this first question towards uh santua and then lois you can answer from there what do you wish you knew before coming to America? That's a that's a that's a tough question, but um I wish I, I wish I knew the um the opportunities ahead of me. Like if I was aware of the things that I was about to come and meet, maybe I would have made a better preparation. Like I don't know if you get what I'm saying, even though I was small. But maybe I would have had a different mindset from what I had before I came. Yeah. But, yeah. 
and how do you wish your parents were able to support you i feel well, like um yeah sorry you can go on no how do you wish your parents were able to support you if so if they already have the way you think they should have mm -hmm. do you think they could have done a better job or are they is it just fine the way it is i feel like they've done their best to like do everything to provide me what i need to become who they want me to be i feel like it's up to me now to um to um make their all their hard work and everything to use like you know I me mean? like yes. to live up to their expectations and then not just make them like oh i just wasted money on her for no reason like i just feel like they've done their best and it's up to me to live up to their expectations yeah let's say what about you um can you repeat the question please the question was do you what do you wish you knew before coming to america and how do you wish your parents were able to support you or if they've already if you already think they've done so like is there anything you think they could do more or has it been enough um before coming here i wish i would have known how diverse it was gonna be because in ghana you just see Africans. You know, you'll see a few other people here and there, but most you're just surrounded by Africans, Ghanaians. But coming to America, I just never realized how diverse, how many, how many different types of races. Again, I came here when I was five. I was very young. I started kindergarten here. So I didn't realize how many races, how many different cultures there were here. I wish I just knew more of that. Even though I was young, I just wish my parents would have prepared me for the criticism that I was also going to face coming here because I did get bullied a lot in middle and elementary school because I've always been a person where I'm proud to say I'm from Africa. I'm proud to say I'm from Ghana. I say that like every single day. I'm so proud to say that's where I'm from. Yeah. But here in America, they give you this view of Africa as like lions and gazelles. <laughs> and deserts and I was going to have that be our next question and i just never understood that i'm like every time like people i would ask people you know people or people would ask me you know how's africa or how was it like there or i'd ask them like what's your what's your perspective of africa they just give me this lion king version and i'm like who taught you this this is pure ignorance because it's not that at all like, people don't realize that there is life in Africa, you know what yeah. I mean? There's schools, there's hotels. I, I told one person that McDonald's existed in Africa, they went crazy because they didn't think, I, they thought I was lying. I, I told them that McDonald's and Burger King exist and they were like, eh? I'm like, yeah, like there's life there. <laughs> oh, I wish I knew, I, or I wish I, I came, I wish I came here more mentally prepared for the criticism that I was going to face so that I could stand firm and say, no, this isn't true or no, that's true. You know what I mean? And I wish yeah. my parents, my parents support me all the time. I, I am forever grateful for my parents and I feel like they, they always do their best. Like imagine like two parents coming, two people coming here. And my, my parents' story was kind of different. My parents were separated for a good three to four years because my dad came here first for jobs and then me and my mom followed. So I'm super proud of my parents for making that decision to, you know, have that little separation to go for their goals and to build the life that they want as husband and wife together. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. they support me and no matter what I do, but I just wish they would have told me all of this before I like, at least let me know once I got there, because when I, I got there, I got here in America when I, um, December time which gave me time before school. So I wish, I just wish my parents would have filled me in more on what I would be expecting criticism wise. So. Okay. So Asensua, please go ahead and what do you have to say in was like to the question? What question? It says, um, what was, oh, was there anything that you feel you could have been prepared like a response to what I said. Oh, what? I said earlier. I I think that I should have I should have been prepared for like um. I don't know, but I think like to to know the opportunities that were ahead of me. Oh yeah. Before. Oh yeah, you did say that you went first. I'm sorry, <laughs> but so, 
before um, I go on to the next question, mm -hmm. what I would like to say in response to Lois is that um, the thing about preparation is how do you prepare a small child your age? Just think about how old you are. How do you prepare a small child who has this mentality of America? Because you know, in Africa, we all have this idea of what America is like fed by the media that we see you know we all believe in this long hair is the best way light skin and mm -hmm. you know america is this place with unicorns and free money yeah. like as soon as you come here you get money and a house and a free car you know but so if we all have this mindset has been instilled in us how do you prepare your little child and break their dreams and realities by being like, hey, when you come here, be careful. You, this, all these people are going to judge you based on the color of your skin. They're going to judge you based on your looks and your clothes and be like, oh my gosh, she does not belong in this advanced class. She does not belong with these smart group of people. She belongs with these people. Just categorize you and basically stop you from going up to a certain point in life you know um, progress of education based on looks how do you prepare a child for that okay um okay number one i feel like that stereo that okay, not stereotype but that idea of america is this like big land gold i feel like that's the first thing that needs to be destroyed yeah. like let's just just be straight up and be honest with our children from now on you know yes america has a lot of more educational opportunities than africa will have because the poverty level is on no poverty is really low there but let's just get rid of that of this america is the land of gold and riches no that's a lie all right and i also feel the way i was raised was my mom always told me to be mentally strong my mom from a very young age my mom whatever she told me even as a five-year-old i processed it as like this is serious business you know what i mean like i never took it as oh my mommy told me this my mommy told me that it was more of like listen to what i say and take that like wh whatever my whatever my mom gives whatever information my mom gives me i walk with that every day so i feel like if my parents would have just been like honest and completely real with me and been like people are go you're going to get bullied you're the people are going to group you as this or that people are going to call you names if my parents would have been completely honest with me from the very from the from the start i felt like i feel like i would have been more prepared to stand strong and say this isn't true that isn't true but because i had this stereotype of or i had i had this perception of america and they have this perception of africa that like it's two completely different things so two of those two don't mix you know what i mean so it's hard it, it would it would it's hard for me to like stand firm and say this and that when there's when america just shows them this view of africa as just this dry desert so i just wish that like if i was just more prepared for like the criticism then yeah it would have made a big difference for me Asantua, is there any way you think we could as ours like personally what anything you have experienced you experienced when you came that really has still had an effect on you right now or like has changed you in any way that you can't change back or you feel like you could get back um i feel like i'm i didn't really face any criticisms like i didn't really face any stereotypes or i wasn't really tagged with like you're from africa and you're black you know that kind of thing mm -hmm. i mean i had a, a few people make fun of me like you are too black you're too this but i feel like i've i've always been part of who i am like, since I was small, even when I grew up in Africa, I've always, they used to call me black in Africa. And it was a surprise because yeah. we were all black. Like, it didn't really make sense. But, mm -hmm. so I was just used to, like, everything that, like, I wasn't, I wasn't going to fall for anybody's stereotype or you're this or you're a black monkey or you're that or you look like a this, you look like a that. But I feel like if kids really get affected by the things that they hear when they're small. Like, everything that you tell a child when they're little, they eventually end up growing up with it, and then they eventually, like, yeah. Some kids you just start to believe it. Hurt. Right. Yeah. You start getting hurt along the way. 
and then they grow up and they're like i'm so insecure because they, they call me black and they call me that but i feel like if you're too if you're always going to live your life to please people they are going to fall for whatever they're going to say but if you feel comfortable in your skin color or whatever it is that you are smart or whatever whatever stereotype whatever stereotype it is that you're um that they put before you as a child i feel like children should be it should be about unity you know what i mean yeah like you can't just tell a child um you're black so you can't hang out with me i feel like it doesn't make sense even though i didn't go through any of that but i feel like a lot of kids grew up with such things and so they can't really like hang out with people now because they feel like I'd be hurt when I was small. You know what I mean? I but I didn't really face any anything like that when I was small. So that's very good. That's very good that you didn't experience anything like that, like blatant racism, blatant colorism against you. But the thing, what I it seems to be boiling down to is the power of mindset, the mm-hmm. power of telling your child, like strengthening your child's mind at a very young age so that they know exactly who they are, they know exactly where they come from, and they know what to be proud of. So, right. but the thing I've seen to personally encounter with that is, even though sometimes your child may have a strong mindset, the mm-hmm. opposition may be so strong against them yeah. that it may crack a hole in it. Make it not even a hole, just make a little crack in that confidence, mm-hmm. make a little crack in that strong barrier that they've already had set up that you spent years building up because they've come to this whole new land where uh-huh. you, they're like oh my you, they keep defending themselves against it they keep defending themselves against it continuously uh-huh. but after a while it just gets tiring because you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again you were getting the stronger opposition. So it's like water against a little wood, wood like bridge, mm-hmm. you know, eventually it's going to break yeah. so- or something without some reinforcement. So another question, I was actually gonna ask this question, but we also kind of branched into different conversations. Mm-hmm. What, um, what are some common misconceptions you've encountered in this country? Like, what is, just throw it out there. I know, like, just throw it out there because <laughs> I know there's a lot of that. Let's hear Pure it. Pure ignorance. Like, people just fail to do their research. And that's the thing that confused me because it's like America's supposed to be this land of knowledge and and success, but yet you, you have this, just this one ignorant conception of africa it's like huh it just doesn't work for me you know what i mean like, it's like number one africa is a continent okay let's get that straight because people think it's a country and i just i don't understand why people think it's a country how can how like that's like one of the first things you learn as a child that like the seven continents People fail to realize that Africa is a continent. And whenever people ask me where I'm from, I say Africa, and they ask me, oh, um, what, like, what language do you speak African? And I'm like, what do you mean African? Like, that's, that's not my language. If, I'm, if, if that is a language, that's not my language. And they're like, but you're from Africa. I'm like, yeah, but I'm from a different part of Africa. You know what I mean? Like, they don't understand that concept. And, like, it just always confused me because it's, like, I've always been taught that America is, like, this knowledge and, like, and like, like this, you know, just this successful world. And then you meet people who don't even know that Africa is a continent. And then it's just, like, huh? And then people having this Lion King mindset of Africa. Like, when I tell people I lived in a house with a maid, they look at me as if I'm the crazy one. And I'm like, yeah, I had a house. I, I lived in a house with my grandma. My mother owned a store. Like, every time I tell them my life story, they're just like, oh, I thought, like, you lived in a hut and you wore string skirts and you swung from vines. String skirts. I'm so serious. I was like, are you serious? At a quinceanera, I was at a party. My one, She was not even my friend. This girl, she, she asked me, she was like, Lois, have you ever ridden on an elephant before? True story. I'm not even joking. This is like an 
on everything. This is a true story. She said, have you ever been on an elephant before? I looked at her. I was like, are you serious? You're going to be that ignorant in front of everyone. And the thing is, you know everybody what? laughed. The thing about that is that I've started to make the realization. I, actually, let me say this after I said to her. Sorry about that. But yeah. as well, have you, what about your encounters? Oh, so I've 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 encountered some 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 ignorance, ignorance. a yeah. lot a lot of ignorance and is is I I feel like like one time I went to school and then I was wearing some Nike shoes and then somebody said did you have those in Africa did you wear shoes in Africa did you have such clothes in Africa did you eat in Africa like what did you eat when you went to school did you eat good food like they see me going for lunch and like oh my god yeah how you can get the food because you didn't have that in Africa. You know what I mean? And sometimes I take it as a joke because I feel like, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just ignorance. But well, if you sit down to think about it, it's like you have phones and stuff and you don't search up stuff like this. And then you're asking yeah, me if you have shoes in Africa. The fact that some people are poor in Africa doesn't mean everyone is poor in Africa. It's just like here. People don't have money here. People sleep on the street. It doesn't mean everybody here sleeps on the street. Thank you. That's just one thing that I don't know, but. So what I was, um, one day I was actually sitting here thinking about it because I was here, I was like, okay, let me try and put a positive spin on this whole thing because mm-hmm. the more we talk about it, it's like more negative, negative, negative. So I'm trying to bring some positivity in it and I was just thinking about it and I realized that Africa is being given, a, like we're not being given a fair card because if you think about it, America where they are today it's from years and years and years of growing. Like America is old compared to Africa. Africa is, uh, the African countries, they gained their independence in the 1900s. The 1900s was like around the time where America was having its civil war. Like that's when they were going through it, trying to build themselves up, you know? So basically we are in our 1600s and 1400s of America. And yet we're being judged like the way America wasn't. Our faults are being put on the pedestal as opposed to our successes. We have a lot of innovators, a lot of artists in Africa who are not acknowledged for the art and given credit for their wonderful work. So what we need to do is raise up those people. And just like America has its problems that you rarely hear about, Africa has its problems, but it's always been put in display. Mm -hmm. That needs to be changed. And the problem with the ignorance is that it's gotten to the point that people don't, we're in an age where information is easy to access, but that has also increased our laziness. So people don't want to know the good news, want to know information. They're not willing to take that extra step, no matter how little it is, and Mm -hmm. find it. They just want to feel like they know everything and know what they know you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you realize that if you go to ghana all the tourism sites or like all everywhere that any tourist you see is from is white you know what i mean yeah every tourist you see is from another country trying to come to explore africa because africa is beautiful africa has this africa has that but then, yes they sit back and then they don't think about all those stuff but then they always think about how um People live in huts in Africa. People don't eat good food in Africa. And I find it really disturbing. It's, I'm like... Okay, so what do you think has been a big difference from the, 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 like, the past years and the years now where African culture is being put on display because of social media and globalization? What's your reaction to that? Repeat the question what do you what is your reaction to african culture being put on the on a display like azoto and stuff you people didn't really know about it because they didn't have connections like globalization has made it easier for both continents to be able to connect and all this stuff what's your reaction to it asantua can you go first and then i'll say because i know you have a lot to say oh i do (laughs) okay so i feel like um everything is being hidden because any original thing that Africans bring, Americans try to find a way to make it theirs, to make it <laughs> Americanized. 
like recently i saw you know those cute braids that um kim you know kardashian little braids and kim kardashian is trying to make it something else talking about the, it's some new kind of braids, kind braids. Of meanwhile it has been in africa like it has been there for ages been there like it's been there i don't know why it's now a thing that the beginning of time exactly I don't know why it's now a thing that people want to do because Kim Kardashian did it. If you saw an African lady do that with her kid at her back, you wouldn't want to do that hairstyle. So yeah. I feel like Africans are also just staying back because everything they do is being copied. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yes. everything they try to bring out as their own, Americans have a new way of making it theirs. That's, that's just how I feel. So Africa is just relaxed. Like, <laughs> relaxed, just chill. Yeah. <laughs> Relax, we're chilling. I say, what about you? Oh, whew. finally. <laughs> okay. Culture appropriation at its best is right. It's, it's at an all time high right now. Like, people call Africa these names, but yet, when we, when Black people, Africans, we are creative creatures. We are creative, we are talented. That's just built in us. When everything from our our ancestors, like braids, music, all of this comes up, Americans just want to grab it. Like, they're just little, you know, little crabs. They just want to get a little piece of it. Like, I saw this tweet on, um, on Twitter. It was reposted on Instagram. It was Rihanna. She was doing a South African dance called, like, I... I, I'm oh, pronouncing yeah. it wrong. But let's call it the growl, growl. I'm, I'm oh, pronouncing it growl, growl or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that. And then people were like calling it the stanky leg. And then everybody came for the people are calling. Some people were like, no, it's it's a South African dance. And like people aren't bashing on Rihanna. It's the fact that people are trying to take something that's South African and turn it into oh, a different style of a stanky leg. Like, no, you have to give credit where it's due. Mm -hmm. I mean, personally, I don't have a problem with, like, whites, Asians, or whoever wearing braids, wearing our clothing. I, I personally don't have a problem with that. But as long as you know that y'all y'all did not create this, y'all did not invent this, it came from my culture, my country. If you give credit where it's due, I personally don't have a problem with it. Like, white people, they can wear braids all they want. Just understand that your people did not create that. Your people did not come up with that. My people did. Just give credit where it's due and everything will be fine. That's just my personal opinion. I don't have a problem with people wearing things because I feel like also some people, they just like to explore different cultures. You know what I mean? Like like the Asian culture. Like people love to eat Asian food and stuff, but like authentic food. You know, like trying different foods, different clothing, different hairstyles, di learning different languages. I feel like that's perfectly fine. But as but as long as you know that that's the culture that it comes from, you don't try to turn it into this American lifestyle or this just try to transform into like this American way. I personally think it's okay. Okay, so I know we've kind of strayed a little away. Like we've gotten a lot of things off our chest about how we feel being African children, African born and raised children in America, you know, going up here as teenagers. But I would like for us to go back on the topic of coming here and like what it's like, especially is there like, is there any thing, like any kind of advice you would give to yourself, like your Ghana self, I'm saying, or any person back home who is coming here about what they should do to prepare themselves to come here. like in addition to opportunities, like what exactly, anything specific? Um, I would say don't take no for an answer in whatever you do. Opportunity wise, like whatever, whatever goal you have, because when you come here, people will try to degrade you. They will try to say, you can't do this, you can't do that, but you can. Don't ever take no for an answer and always try to find a way to make sure that you achieve what you want to achieve. And I feel like personally, that's what I have to learn too. But you really have to, you have to believe that, you know, I came here for a reason I am, and I'm going to achieve that because most people that come here, they come here for a better opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I would tell my, my old self, my Ghana self, I would have told myself to, to be strong in the mind, to 
to not let other people's words affect them because like when Asante was when Asante was talking about how people didn't really make fun of her and stuff she came here you said you came here when you were nine I came here when I was five so the age difference is not a lot but it's it's the mentally it's it's a difference so me coming here I I was really affected by that and like till now it still affects me I used to be so ashamed of my skin color I used to be ashamed of my teeth I used to be ashamed of so many things about myself, but now it's like it's glorified here. Like now everybody wants that dark skin with white teeth. You know what I mean? Everybody wants that dark skin, big, oiled up, dark skin girl, that African girl. So I would have told myself to just be confident and know, be firm in who you are. Be proud, but not just be proud, but like know that where you came from, like that's a blessed thing, you know? Don't let anybody knock that down for you. That's, that's what I would tell myself. Um, so I remember when I was like my dad always used to tell me that um America is a place that can always make you or break you. So it's up to you to make up to make up your mind and then make the right choice. Because it will get to a point where you could choose you could choose the choice like you have a choice to make a good decision or a bad decision. But then when it comes to the consequences, you don't have a choice. It depends on what you choose and then how it's going to affect you. So I just feel like that's what people should put in mind. Like coming here is not all about, um, there's a lot of shoes, there's a lot of clothes, there's a lot of money, there are opportunities. Put in mind that there are lots of things that will lead to that opportunity. So if you make up your mind to follow the good people and go like the right way, you're going to end up doing the right thing. But then if you end up choosing the right, um, I mean, if you end up choosing the wrong choice, and they end up in the wrong place. You shouldn't blame anyone because then at the end of the day is your choice. Yeah. But then you should always stay strong, positive. Positive. <laughs> That's the only way to go. Positivity. Right. Positive. I would tell I would honestly tell myself to keep to always keep the skills I have, like the work ethic and mm-hmm. when the way I was always running around, playing with wood, making stuff out of wood. That is actually useful. That is literally a mini engineer in the making. Mm-hmm. Do not lose that skill because you're like, oh, American children don't do that. They just run around and play soccer. So let me go do that. No, keep that in mind because when it comes time, you will be able to take all these harder classes, which will open doors to better colleges and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. This stuff, like these little things, like, um, and school in ghana the work the work that they make you do is harder so you have a higher a better work ethic do not lose yep. that when you come here that is going to push you way way ahead mm-hmm. you're going to be taking harder classes and it's going to seem normal because of that work ethic you have do not lose it okay don't lose focus because everybody doing boga boga um let me right. try to <laughs> boga boga like a gangster, I guess. Yeah, right? But he's trying to live a good life. The party. Yeah. Trying to live a good life when you're not when you don't have the money to be living a good life. Like live under your means. If you have five cents, don't buy anything. Mm-hmm. Eat in your house. You know, go sleep. Read right. a book. You know? What are you right. going to the mall for with five cents? You can't even <laughs> buy a gumball with five cents. So just be chill, be positive. And yeah, thank you guys so much for coming today. And we, I think we had a pretty good conversation. We got a lot, a lot of things off our chest. What do you guys think? I good. think it's pretty well. Yeah. Thank you so so much for coming, and thank you for so having us for coming on to Team Talk Live with your guest host Ella Majadi and your guests Lois Ase, Asanto Berko. Ghana girls, thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful yes, yes. <laughs> and you guys have a great evening. Bye. 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 Oh, good.